Week 6, Lesson 7, Tintin, From Reporter to Explorer. This video is a direct video to the Tintin one that was made during the Week 2 videos. Please watch that one before you watch this one, if you have not already, as it fills in a lot of the information. I mentioned Hersh's most famous boy reporter before World War II happened. Now we're going to take a quick look at that character to see what was happening before and after that conflict. If you recall, before World War II, Hirsch was writing about Tintin tackling issues like what was happening in the Soviet Union and what the Japanese soldiers were doing in mainland Asia. Using slapstick humor, he was tackling real-world issues and trying to bring young men's attention to them. All this happened before the Nazis invaded Belgium. May 10, 1940, the Nazis invaded Belgium, eventually winning their battles there and occupying the country. The problem is... Nazis were very supportive of freedom of expression for those that they occupied. And Hirsch feared for his life, since he wrote at least one story that showed the Nazis' allies, the Japanese, in a poor light. To protect himself, Tintin could no longer look at world events, since the Nazis were known to be ruthless in eliminating people who might make them look bad. The problem was that Hirsch still needed to make a living, and being an artist was one of the safer occupations in Nazi-occupied Belgium. So Hirsch took his character Tintin and made him go on fantastical adventures. Tintin's first big science fiction adventure was Tintin, the Shooting Star, which involved Tintin going out to sea to find a meteorite that had crashed, but was floating on the water, and everything on that meteorite grew impossibly large. Tintin's next adventure was longer than usual, and it had to be split into two tomes, or two books. They were Tintin, The Secret of the Unicorn, and Tintin, Red Rackham's treasure, respectfully. This is where Tintin teams up with his friend, Captain Haddock, to find the captain's ancestor's treasure. There were lots of puzzles and excitement, and in the end, Captain Haddock became a millionaire, ensuring his lifelong friendship to Tintin. During that adventure, they find another member of Tintin's friends, Professor Calculus, which, in the following adventures, Tintin, the Seven Crystal Balls, and Tintin, Prisoners of the Sun, respectfully, the professor disappears, and it's up to Tintin to save him, before him and all his friends get sacrificed to the Aztec-inspired civilization. This was a clear case of Tintin going up against mystic forces. So, during the invasion, we have Tintin dealing with science fiction concepts, mystic or magical concepts, and long-lost treasure. This was a very different direction than the character was originally supposed to head in. Her survived the war, and with Belgium freed, Tintin was able to go back to being a reporter. Except that he didn't. The invention of the atomic bomb and the jet engine led to a huge increase in science and technology, and Tintin was going to follow that up. Tintin became a full-on explorer, going to the moon, chasing down the abominable snowman in Tibet, and in his penultimate or second-last adventure, he ran across aliens. He went to the moon before the Americans did and did a surprisingly good job at guessing what the rocket ship equipment and technology would look like. Hirsch's fantastical stories did very well during and after the occupation, and out of all of Belgium's citizens, Hirsch was one of the few that did well for himself during the war, which temporarily made him a suspect in a Belgium investigation to see if he was working with the Nazis. Of course he wasn't, but by that time, more people knew Tintin as an adventurer than a reporter so Hirsch continued to write those types of stories. Tintin's success was one of the early successes of a European comic character, and the character was finally retired from comics in 1976, when Tintin in the Picaros was made and completed. Hirsch did other comics, like The Adventures of Joe, Zet, and Jocko, but nothing came close to the impact and popularity that Tintin had. Tintin had one more unfinished adventure. That was published after Hirsch's death. That was Tintin and the Alpha Art. Hirsch passed away in 1983 at the age of 75. So, why is this important to our course? Because Tintin was censored and became a different comic because of it. It moved away from reporting and more towards adventure and science fiction. Like the comics later censored in America, Tintin found its success through adventure and science fiction. Questions to Contemplate why do you think some censored comics find success by moving towards science fiction? Why do you think Hirsch was unable to find another hit outside of Tintin?